So we'll explain what it is in a moment, but hold on a second. You, you've said here before that you're always a wreck before a performance. You get very nervous. Yes. So with this, and it opens on Monday, you don't get rehearsal. We get one day's rehearsal and then we perform it at night. And that's true for all the other six women who are, who are doing their monologues. I'm doing one and Rula Lenska's in it and Josie Lawrence. Rula and Lenska got you involved, didn't she? She did. Yeah. I'll um, speak to her afterwards. Uh, <laughs> but what, why? Is this, is this to add an extra dimension of challenge to, to the festival? I think it was all the time that they had and they wanted to do it and put it on. It's a wonderful piece. That all the monologues that we're doing are just moving and, and true. I'm, I'm playing a woman from Northern Ireland who was an important person in the, in the peace process and um, her is name is Inez, e Inez McCormack. Oh, okay. And another woman who's played her is Mel Meryl Streep. Well, I never thought I was going to wow. play the same parts as that great lady. So it's an opportunity for me and I'm just going to take it. She was and a very, very important in, in being part of the resolution of the troubles in Ireland. Yes. She, I wish she was still alive. Uh, she was a, a magnificent woman, came from a Protestant background and yet was able to put behind her the, the bigoted attitude that, that many of them had and was able to talk to Catholics and understand their problems and cross the road, cross mm. the barrier. And that's just what we all have to do these days. And uh, obviously, a big challenge that comes with this is the accent also. I know. So I'm feeling... scared stiff, really. <laughs> well, I've got to work on that. I've been watching the football, trying to get the, uh, you know, hearing the excitement there. We'll give you, uh, we'll give, we'll give you some tapes of uh, Eamon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before, before exactly you go. That's you Funnily go. enough, I saw Eamon recently because he's had his knees done. Or yes, his, yes. yes. And I went to the same place in ah. Surrey. The Claverdale. Oh, fantastic. And I, I had my knees done at Epsom on the National Health. Yeah. You just showed us your scar when you I'll walked show in. You, you I'll did? show it again. Said, oh, gosh, wowzer. And you've just... You're all sorted now, aren't you? You're, you're done, you're out of rehab, I think they've can said. Can I put my... Yes, you can. Yes, you, can. <laughs> <laughs> you can. And you're all on the mend and, and, and well. As far as I know, I see my surgeon on the 4th of July. Um, and I hope he'll give me the go-ahead to swim, because I haven't been able to swim yet. Right. Okay. Um, just, to, just to conclude on that, then, it's, it's Women at War. Uh, uh, this is the festival. It's the... Uh, yes, it's going on for a month, but yeah. my show with all the other women, not mine, everybody's, yeah. is on the next Monday, the, Monday the 27th. 27th. And this, this is uh, looking at the impact of women throughout the, throughout the centuries uh, uh, with war. And the, what impact the impact of women on, on war and yeah. war on women. Mm. And we all know, those of us who've lived through it, that that, that is a huge subject. Mm. And it's it's a wonderful thing. And it's at Frederick's Place in the city somewhere. I haven't found it yet, but um, <laughs> oh, <God>. we'll, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on your sat nav, you'll be able to get there. You're very you're very um, political. You, you, you like to get involved. You're very vocal about things. And um, I watched, the same, same as you did, Making a Murderer, and you got quite heavily involved with this, didn't you? Well, to me, that was a massive miscarriage of justice. It was on Netflix, and it's still on Netflix, yeah. I imagine, if people haven't seen it. Yeah, you might, if you haven't seen well, it. This is, this is Stephen Avery, who, uh, uh, who's uh, in Wisconsin, and, uh, and he was given 18 years for murder, cleared by his DNA evidence, and then almost immediately after was re-arrested for another murder. And the circumstances surrounding that murder of the woman that went round to his scrap metal yard yeah. were extreme. I mean, it's very complicated to tell now, so we won't, we won't try and... Uh, lots, you should have a look at it. Yeah, absolutely. See it. Watch the programme. Yeah. Yes, watch the programme, and it, you will be filled, as I was, with a burning sense of injustice. Yeah. Yeah, you said you, you want to go and terrifying. see him. I would love to go and see him. I've written to him. Did he reply? Not yet. Not I mean, yet. It, is, it is terrible. You watch it, and I think it's one of the most scariest things because it's almost... It's like sort of justice turns itself up upon you. And this is in America, which you believe is a civilised country, although I must say recently I've been doubting that. Mm. And uh, here is a man, one and a half hours after this woman's body was found, they started to point to him with no evidence. Uh, because he was in the throes of suing the city mm. for a huge amount of money, they wanted to keep him down. Mm. And I think that was at the root of it. So you, you like to use your voice for, for these sort of things? What's it for if we can't use it to do some good in the world? Mm. People I know don't agree with me, and I'm, I am a loud mouth and a busybody. That's all true. But 
if you feel that something is wrong, you have to try to change it. Oh, no, I think that's one of your greatest strengths, actually. And you, you always speak about women, particularly women and girls, and sort of young girls growing up with confidence and sort of to carry them through life. I know that's something that's important to you. Well, I think everybody inside is a bit scared. I don't know. Are, are you? Would you admit oh, to that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm still a little bit nervous, always, a little bit. Mm. And when I have to do my job on stage, then I'm terrified. So we all need a bit of a pat and a helping hand and a bit of encouragement. It's, it matters. It makes a difference. We tried to give you a pat and a helping hand the last time you were on when it came to uh, 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 appealing directly to the team at Call the Midwife. Have they called you yet? Not a titter. Oh. <laughs> not a, not right. a thing. We're going to need to be more. I'm, I, can't I don't know what I have it. to do. Show my scar, perhaps. <laughs> there we are. So that's <laughs> medical. <laughs> it's medical. <laughs> no, if I don't get to do it, I can I can survive. But I just admire the program so much yeah. well, and the actresses. On, what are who they are they I know it's a no this brainer. Is twice we've no said brainer. it now. You're missing out on Miriam Margulies. Are you joking? <laughs> Right, let's hope that happens now. Thank you. Um, now then, our phone-in uh, is coming up in just a moment, and uh, you're going to stay with us for this, aren't you? If, if you like, oh, yes. yes. I would you love you to. OK. Yeah, if you're happy. Do people come to you for advice ever? Is this sort of yes, quite often. Good. Quite often. Are you advice. good at giving advice? I'm good at giving it. I don't know whether the advice is good, <laughs> but... <laughs> well, we'll see in a minute. Hello, YouTube. For more of the same, just click here. And don't forget, you can subscribe for even more of these amazing videos exclusive to our channel. So I thought, OK, let's go for it. And I had Ben Wishaw sitting beside me in his underwear. So the two of us are sitting there and I'm all humped over. And Colin Farrell turned round and looked at me and just blatantly burst out <laughs> laughing at me. 